I want to read Lamentations 3 to you. I love it where it says in verse 22, it says this, family, it says, it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is thou faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Is there any believers in this in the building today? Come on, family. Can we just begin to make some noise in here? Can we begin to release a sound? Can your soul begin to cry out today? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is my portion. Come on, somebody. If it wasn't for the hand of your father, where no Lord knows where we will be right now. Hit the consuming fire of the enemy that has a plan to steal, kill, and destroy everything in your life. But thank God, great is. Come on, somebody. Or is there a praise in here today? Great is thy faithfulness. Or oh, he's faithful on a Monday. Come on, somebody. Or oh, he's faithful on a Wednesday. Come on, somebody. He's faithful in the darkest times of your season. Your heavenly father is always there. Great is thy faithfulness. Can we just begin to stretch our hands to heaven? Come on, regardless of where your thoughts can be shifted to right now, regardless of how your week been, regardless of if you're feeling that you're winning in this season or you're on the edge of, of just breaking down, regardless of that, hear me today, my family. Great is your father. He's always consistent with his love. He's always consistent and persistent with his faithfulness. We serve a God that cannot lie. That his word said that every word that he has spoken on you shall come to pass. That it, it does not fall on broken ground. That it falls on fertile ground. So my sister, hear me today. You are fertile. My brother, hear me today. You are fertile. And the words that God has been speaking over you way back then, the words that my God is speaking to you today in this season, it is falling on good ground. Is there anybody in here today that knows? that they're in a new season? Is there anybody in here today that knows that they're on higher ground? Is there anybody in here today that knows that it's words, that it's speaking, that it's getting ready to give birth to some new things in life? Why? Because he's faithful. He's faithful. Great is your faithfulness. Great is our Heavenly Father. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for this time in worship, Lord God. We thank you that we get to sit at your feet today. We pray right now that we even decrease so your presence can increase. We ask that you open up our eyes, our ears. Let us hear from you like never before. Let us touch your garment through worship today. Let us touch your garment even through our praise. And even right now, let us touch your garment through your word. If you have your Bibles, family, could just, just continue to stand. I want to read Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It feels good in here, family. It feels good in here. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. I want to read it from the New Living Translation. If you if you have it, just, just shout back at me. Say, say, I got it, Pastor. There we go. Come on. That's, that was about two people. I, I'll give you some time. If you're in Genesis, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. Verse 42. Come on, family. It says, all the believers devoted themselves. Come on, somebody. To the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. The word fellowship can sound very churchy, right? Fellowship. But in other words, when you break it down, somebody say participation. Yeah, yeah, God is calling you to participate in some things in this season of your life. Not just fellowship, that's very churchy, but participation. God is calling you 
to participate in some things that you've been saying no to. Come on, somebody. That God is calling all of us to more, to begin to participate in more worship, to participate in more prayer. Come on, somebody. To, to begin to participate at a level of devotion to the area that he's getting ready to call you. Because understand this, family, when God calls you higher, he's demanding more from you. Participation, participation, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over, all, came over them all, and apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. And all of the believers met together in one place, somebody say one place, and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord, somebody say the Lord. The Lord added to their fellowship those were being saved. Amen. Family, I, I want to take some time today. I want to preach from the subject matter. Come on, if you're taking notes, just write this title down. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. Oh, come on, come on. Say it, say it to your neighbor because they didn't hear it. Come on. Put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. Because I'm ready. Is there anybody ready today? Put me in, coach, because I'm ready. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you as we begin to transition into the word. Speak to us, Heavenly Father. Teach us today. Minister to our souls. Encourage us. Increase our faith to run after you like never before, Lord God. We believe the best days are yet to come, Lord God, that we are walking into our greatest days because you're so faithful. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. amen. You can go ahead and be seated, family. Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our C students. Come on, can we put our hands together for our C students out of our middle and high school? I'm telling you, family, if you, when, when you leave out, I'm telling you, that, that classroom was full last week. I'm telling you, it, it's crowded in there, and our middle and high school there. They're doing an excellent job. We have excellent leaders over there. And I'm, I'm just so blown away of what's happening inside of that classroom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Family, 1993, a classic movie was introduced to the world. This is one of my favorites, family. This movie, it, it blows me away. I love this movie. I love this movie. Anybody know the movie called Rudy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Anybody with me? Okay, okay. I, I, I'll give a little plot. Rudy was introduced, Leah. Come on, help me out. For the ones that don't know about Rudy, Rudy, unfortunately, uh, family, Rudy was, was, had a passion to play for the Notre Dame football team. Rudy didn't even have the grades to go to the university, let alone did Rudy even have the money, the tuition to even be admitted into the university. And matter of fact, if you even look at Rudy, Rudy was kind of small. Rudy, when Rudy got on the football, he, he didn't measure up to the other football players. But Rudy still had a passion and a desire to fulfill the thing that he believed that God called him to do. So Rudy gets committed into the university. And for two years, for two years, Pastor Brennan, this is my movie, for two years, Rudy didn't even get in the game. Rudy's getting beat up after, after practice, after practice, Brittany. Rudy is getting destroyed, but Rudy would not give up. Rudy just kept showing up. And Rudy, they didn't even allow Rudy to get dressed, Julius. He was just a practice dummy for the other people that was on the team. Anybody ever feel like you're just a practice dummy? <laughs> Help me out here. For two years that Rudy not even being able to, to dress for the game, but I love this part of the movie, the last game of the season. Anybody know the chant? Anybody know the chant? The chant begins, Rudy, 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 Rudy. Oh, come on, help me out. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. They begin to chant Rudy name. It's a couple plays left in the game. The season's about to be over, Brenda. The season's about to be over. They begin to chant Rudy name. Rudy goes into the game. 
Rudy, after a couple plays, Rudy makes a sack. They begin, they win the game, and they host Rudy off the field. Rudy is the champion of the world. Everybody loves Rudy. And what I love about this story, family, it is such an underdog story. You maybe can, can, can resemble what Rudy was going through. And what I love about this story is that in those two years, I can see the victory, but I can see that Rudy stay committed. I, I can see that Rudy could have easily chose convenience over being committed. Yeah. That for two years, that Rudy could have easily took the easy way out, but Rudy stayed committed to the plan despite the obstacles that was in his way. Right. See, what God is teaching us, this is what devotion means, is means that I'm willing to choose commitment over convenience. See, we live in a society, family, where convenience is normally our go-to, it's normally our option. We normally society with society because society wants us to pick convenience. But the more I grow with God and the more I grow better and stronger and wiser with God, God is not picking me to choose convenience. He's telling me to choose commitment. See, this is what devotion is all about, family. This is what devotion is all about because when I'm learning more of walking with God in this series, we're talking about begin again. We're talking about starting fresh. We're talking about even moving into this beautiful space. And even for our church, we're believing that we're walking into a new season. But what, I, what God begins to whisper to me more, he said, Anthony, when I'm giving you more, I'm giving you more responsibility. Yes. See, anytime, there, anytime there's an upgrade in your life, there's an upgrade in responsibility. That God just doesn't give more and he doesn't give us more responsibility. Let me give you some scripture because Luke 12, 48 says it this way, family. He says, for everyone to whom much is given... From much, from him, much will be required. Somebody say required because into whom much has been committed of him, they will ask more of you. See, matter of fact, uh, it's not Bible, but Shakespeare said it this way. What family? He heavy is the, the head that wears the crown. Come on, I know it's not Bible, but, but understand when God calls you to something, he's calling you to more responsibility. See, see, what is God calling you to be devoted to in this season of your life? Well, what is the very thing that we can, I love coming here, we're, we're talking about new season and being better and going to a higher level, but let us just not be a church family that is screaming and praising God for better, 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 but we're not being devoted. Because the higher God is taking us, family, the lower he wants us to go in him. The deeper your roots go, the higher you can go with God. God is calling you to be devoted to some things. And I wrote this down in my notes, family. Never give up the commitment to God just for the convenience of a bite of a fruit. Adam and Eve took the easy way out. Adam and Eve decided, you know what? I'd rather stay, I'd rather choose convenience rather than commitment. See, a lot of times we can have a whole lot of options in our life. Come on, some family. It's like Baskin Robbins, right? But what, 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 I, what I learned with walking with God is that, God, I don't need a lot of doors. I just need the door. That I don't need a lot of options because, to be honest, too many options actually confuses me. Because, God, I just want to be committed to the door. I just want to be committed to the way. Because now, because God begins to show me more, it's not about going through. Because here, I said this way, half truth is not truth. Half obedience is not complete full obedience. And God is calling us family that he's shifting you into new things, that he's giving you better things, but he's also giving you and requiring you to give him more devotion I love it that when I, when I wrote this in my life, God is calling you to another level of devotion in this season. See here, write this down, fam, because I, I want to break down devoted. It's a very churchy word, right? Very churchy word, Daniel, devoted, devoted, devoted. But what I love about devoted, it means this, to attach oneself to, to serve personally, to not the devoted to endure with. See, see, I love this about the, the devoted, to be at one's disposal. Anybody, at, can, can God use you and call you at any time? Can God call you at midnight to pray for somebody? 
Can, can God call you on your job when you don't want to be disturbed by nobody? Come on, somebody. Can God, can, are you at God's disposal? Can God pick you any time of the day, any time of the week? Can God use you at his disposal for the benefit of somebody else? This is a devoted disciple. This is what I love about the early Christian church is that they were devoted. It says that, this says that the church grew 3,000, 5,000. Why? Because the move of God, but it was a move of God because people decided to be devoted. That people decided to come together, that people decided to share. I love in the scripture from 42 to 47, it says they devoted. It says all came together. It says they were in one place. It's a lot of one common. It's a lot of unity. When a church begins to come together and praise God, there's nothing that our God cannot do. When we decide to come together in unity and lift up the name of Jesus, my God, God is getting ready to move in this place and God is getting ready to move in your life. Why? Because when unity is the, is, is the ground of the seed of what's getting ready to grow in your life, is there unity in the very thing that God is calling you to do? Be devoted to it. See, see, even with devoted family, I love that in devoted even when you study it, even in the Greek, say this with me, say this with me, pros karerita. Pros karerita, come on, so let this let it roll off the tongue, come on. Pros, pros karerita, there we go. There you go, sounds very Italian, don't it? Sounds like, don't, don't it sounds like, like, like what's, what's the move, what's the God, the good, uh, Godfather, there we go. Sounds like the Godfather, like Anthony, pros carito, you know, and pros, pros pro, it means to be devoted. It means to be devoted. You can say that to your spouse this week. Baby, I just need you to pros carolitos. I, I just need you to, I just say it to you, I just need you to pros carritos, just let it roll off the tongue, to be devoted. But actually, Julie, if you study it a little bit more and you go into the root word, the root word from this Greek word is actually kratos. And kratos means power. So what it teaches me, family, that you can't have devotion and not have power. Because pros carritos or devotion comes out of power. They both go hand in hand. So when I study the scriptures a little bit more and I go a little bit deeper with it, if you're in a season where you're feeling weak, you got to check your pros carritos. You got to check your devotion because devotion is birthed out of power. Devotion comes the more you sit with God. Come on, family. The more you get in your word, the more you study, the more you, you sit before him. There's power. So wherever you're feeling weak, I'm telling you right now, just go to him more. If you need a little bit of strength, pray a little bit longer. If you need a more, some more wisdom, come on, get in his word. If you need God to speak to you, find, find a group, find some community in your life. Because the more you get devoted, the more God is getting ready to move in your life. Devote yourself. When we look at the early church, they were devoted. Make a decision today and tell yourself, I'm devoted to this. I I I'm devoted to this. The very thing that God is calling you to, come on, put your, I'm in the game, coach. I'm devoted to this. You have to learn how to encourage yourself. Praise God for the worship leaders. Praise God for Daniel and the drums and, and Chris on the guitar. I can't get them to follow me on a Wednesday. I wish I could. It's in my office just playing when I need it, when I come out of budget meetings and different stuff and, and dealing with people. Can I be transparent with you this morning? Come on, family. Talk. Come we're, we're transparent, church. You wish you had a worship leader on Monday morning dealing with your boss. Come on, family. But you got to learn how to encourage yourself because you're not going to be able to hit that play button on that favorite worship playlist. That you, it got to be birthed inside of you. What's your own playlist? Come on, somebody. You got to devote yourself. Put yourself in it. Why? Because when, you, when, when, you, when God puts it in you, by default, it begins to flow out of you. And my question to you today, what's the default? What, what, when, when you don't have the, the scriptures in front of you and you, you don't got your favorite spot, 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 Spotify, spot list, playlist, come on, Anthony, playlist in front of you, what's your default? What's your default in life? It flows naturally because worship is a lifestyle. 
Worship is not an event. Come on, family, talk to me. Worship is a life that is who you are. It's who he, who he designed you to be. When you are devoted, it just flows. Come on, when somebody cut you off in traffic, you used to cuss them out, but now you just pray for them. Come on, somebody. Because it's a lifestyle. It's who you are. It's who God created to be. Last week, I told you, you are designed to win. Your default is designed to win. Matter of fact, breaking news, my bishop used to say this, you turn to Revelation, you already won. So stop stressing about the things. Stop stressing about it because you win in the end. You're winning it in. All God is saying, you just got to walk through it. Just play along with what I'm doing. I already told you. I broke the news to you. I'm going to provide for you. I know it's not in your life right now, but if you just trust me, my word says that I'm faithful. Come on, somebody. He will bring it to an end according to his plan, according to his purpose. He will do the thing in your end. So stop stressing about it because God is getting ready to move in your life this season. Devote yourself to him. Yeah. Devote yourself to him. Come on, somebody. Every time I do a marriage counseling, every time I officiate it, come on, it's sickness and death is just not for Murray people. It's for his dis devoted disciples as well. And, and when I'm going through hell, come on, God, I'm still with you. When, when, I'm, when I'm on a mountaintop, I'm still with you. When people are leaving me, I'm still with you. It's not based on the season. It's based on the commitment. Come on. It doesn't matter what my season may look like. I'm still committed to God. We teach this to merge people, but it's just not for Murray people. It's just not in sickness and in health. It's just not in life and death. It's in both, I'm with you, God. A devoted disciple is with God regardless of what the climate of the season is. I'm still with you, God. I'm still walking with you, God. I'm still committed to you, God. I know, I know I'm going through right now. I know I'm, on, I'm shaking. I'm on the edge, God, and I'm feeling like I can't make another day. But you know what, God? If I got one breath, I'm going to praise you. If I got one lung, I'm going to praise you. If I got one thought, I'm going I'm to make sure that it's a godly thought, and I'm going to give it to you, God. I'm going to give everything that's in me with all heart and all soul and all mind. This is a devoted disciple. So devoted, doesn't matter what the climate or the season is. So that's why I wrote it here. Come on, family. Make a decision. Make a decision. I'm devoted to this. Make a decision because I ask myself, what's in my life that's suffering that I'm not devoted to? Is my marriage going through certain things because my level of devotion is low? Is what I'm going through on my job, a struggling relationships, et cetera. Uh, we, we, we have to look at ourselves first, internally, before we base the, our perspective externally. We, we always put the mirror up to us first. What can I do better? What, how can I devote myself? Before you place blame on anybody else, hear me on today, family. Can I pass us a little bit in this? Make sure you put the mirror in front of yourself. Anthony, make sure you put the mirror in front of yourself. What, 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 what does your time with God look like? Because more time with God, gives, you, you catch his perspective on things and not your perspective. More time and with God. Come on, last week we talked about flying like an eagle. And maybe God wants to give you an eagle's view of what's going on in your life in this season of your life. Maybe God wants to take you a little bit higher because when you're on ground level, you can just see what's around you. But if you begin to fly like an eagle, you can see that God is setting you up. You can see that your victory is right down the street. You can see that God is in the neighborhood. You can see that God is getting ready to move in your life. If you just won't quit, if you just won't grow weary, if you won't faint and just stay with God, you can see that you're closer than you have ever been because God is moving. He's preparing some things. He's setting some things up. He's just saying, will you trust me? Will you walk with me? I'm, I'm getting ready to do some more in your life. But can you trust me even in a dark season? Can you trust me even when convenience is the, a, a better option sitting in front of you? Can you still trust me when, when I told you to stay committed to this, but, but you, see, you see the current over here of convenience that's, that's intimate, I mean, that, that's tasting you and it's appeasing you and it's trying to draw you off track. Can you stay committed to my calling, to my purpose, to my plan when you don't even understand it? That's what faith is. Come on, somebody. That's what faith, even when you don't see it, but you know he spoke it. 
I, I know you said it, God, but I don't see any results yet. I know you said it, God, but I don't see your hand moving yet. Can you still trust God at a high level even when your eyes don't see it? This is why you can't walk with your, your, your natural eyes. You have to walk with your heart connected to God. Because your eyes will trick you. Mind playing tricks on me. A scar face for some of us. But that's what God would do. Because he wants to lead you not with your eyes, but with your heart connected to him. With your ears listening to him. This is what a shepherd does. That's why the sheep have to listen for the voice of God because he's not leading you with your eyes. He's leading you with your ears. Are you devoted to what God is calling you to? Because here's why I'm saying all of this, fam. I'm getting ready to get into the points. I'm going to break it down a little bit better. But in life, there's a lot of patterns out here. We live in a society where there's many patterns. See, in other words, I, I love my grandmother, God rest her soul, when she used to quilt and, and, and make blankets and different stuff. She, or day after day, day after day she was doing this, she, through a pattern, she created a blanket. Sewing and weaving and doing different things. I didn't know what she was doing, but, but after a month and about six months and eight months, I began to see the pattern come together. See, see, the patterns in your life will begin to create an image that God is calling you to. See, you may not see that little bit of obedience, but that little bit of obedience is part of the pattern that God is calling you to do. See, see, you may say that, God, no one sees what I'm doing in private, and no one sees what I'm sowing, and, and no one is appreciating. But understand this, your valid, validation doesn't come from people, it comes from God. And what you're sowing, God always sees. And what you're sowing is part of the pattern. But we have a choice, family. We have a choice. We have a choice. Are we going to conform ourselves to the world pattern? Or are we going to conform ourselves to God's pattern? Each day you are conforming yourself to, some, which, uh, to a pattern. Which pattern are you choosing to conform yourself? Let me give you a little bit of scripture. We love this scripture in Romans 12 too. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Somebody say transform. By the renewing of your mind. Pattern. Pattern. What's the pattern that God is calling you to in this season? This is devoted to the disciple. That God is calling you to a pattern. Maybe that pattern is waking up early. Maybe that pattern is learning how to give God your first well, maybe that pattern is saying, learning how to say no to certain things. Come on, the power of a no. Somebody learn, need, needs to learn how to practice the power of a no, because if you're saying yes to everything, that means that you're probably saying no to something that God is calling you to. So we miss out on a lot of things that God wants us to say yes to, because saying yes to that is part of, of the what? Pattern. That God is calling you. It may, it may be a small yes, but it's part of the pattern. It may, be part of a, it may be a small no, but God is part of the pattern. Let me give you these three points because I want to break it down. Can I get about 10 more minutes? That's cool. We, we good, family? We good? Talk back to me now. I, I make you miss the game. Come on. Come on. I told you, I promise. I get you to brunch and I get you to the game. I got you. I got you. The pattern of a devoted disciple has several ingredients. I, I want to list out a few. There's so much, there's so many, but I want to I release a few. So write this down. Point number one, a devoted disciple has a desire for the things of the Lord. A devoted disciple has a desire for the things of the Lord. Say desire. A lot of people want to passionately desire things. But all we really need to do is turn our heart towards God. See, a lot of times, a lot of people want passion for things. God, just, just give me the passion. Here's what God is teaching me. In order to catch his passion, just turn your heart towards him. Because sometimes God can call you to some things that you don't like. That sometimes God can call you to be obedient and say yes to some things that you have no clarity about. But God is calling you to. And what I found that you will begin to draw, you will begin to fall in love with the things that God has a love for. 
Hear me when I say this, family. God is changing your appetite for some things. There were some things in your past, come on, somebody, that you had an appetite for. There were some things in your past that you loved for, and God is saying, in this season, the more you devote yourself to me, I'll begin to change your taste bud, that you used to have a taste bud for that, but now I'm changing your taste bud to fall in love for the things that I'm calling you to. Because in order to stay fully committed and fully obedient, you have to learn how to fall in love to the things that God is calling you to. Even for the nice things, but also for the inconvenient, the uncomfortable things as well. God, teach me how to fall in love with those things. Because if it pleases your heart, I want to I wanna say yes. If it puts a smile on your face, I want to be committed to it. If it keeps me up at night and I don't understand it, Lord, teach me how to fall in love with it. If, it's, if you're calling me to do it, what is God calling you to in this season that you need to have a desire for? See, 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 see what I love about this in Zechariah 4.10, watch this, family. It says, do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Before the behavior can change, the desire must begin. See, God is teaching you and he's giving us back our desires for certain things. A lot of times we want, we're, we're waiting for the results. We're waiting for the act to change. We're waiting for the, the behavior to change. We're waiting for the, the outcome to change. And here's what God is saying, Anthony, before all of that takes place, a desire must first be birthed it. In order to have a better marriage, you first have to have a desire to be a better husband. In order to be a better leader, you must first have a desire to be a better leader, to be a better friend and have healthier relationships. You first have to have a desire, and a lot of times we cancel out the desire with God. That can never happen. God, that is not me. God, I don't know if you can do this. God, I don't know if I want to be friends with them anymore. God, I don't know if I want to work. We cancel out the desire with inappropriate language that comes out of our mouth of what God is calling us to do. So we cancel it out with our language. And God is saying, I just want you to have a desire. I just want you to have a desire for better. Do you have a desire for better to the things that God is calling you to? A desire for more. God is saying, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the X's and O's and crossing the T's and dotting the I and, and, and where the resource is going to come from. God, wherever he called you to with the vision, he will provide it. He just wants you to have a desire for more. A desire to be healthy. A desire to love more. A desire to forgive people and desire to give people grace. Come on, somebody. A desire. God, before the work can begin, God is rejoicing just for the people who have a desire. Could we be a church that just has a desire? Coming here on a Sunday morning, God, I got a desire that you're going to heal somebody. God, I, got, I just got a desire that you're getting ready to blow my mind. God, I just, I just have a desire, and maybe that's all you have during the week. Come on, family. God can use your desire and begin to blow your mind. I'm telling you, give God your desires today. This week as a devoted disciple, give God your, desi your desire. God, I desire to have a better week. I desire to see you do some, some great things. Write this down. Point number two, a devoted disciple must eliminate extra baggage. Somebody say eliminate. Here's why, family, because comfort and growth cannot live in the same place together. See, see, I, I love this in Hebrews 12, verse 1. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Come on, family. I, I love it here where it says strip, eliminate. But I even love it more. We study the scriptures a little bit. Before it announces sin, it said every way. So even just because it's not sin, you have to do some inventory in your life in this season and say, God, what's the extra weight that's in my life that's slowing me down? Just because it's sin doesn't mean that God is calling you to it. I'm sorry, just because it's not sin doesn't mean that God is not calling you to it. Just because it's good doesn't mean that God is calling you to it. 
You can't have extra weight in this season. God is calling you to run light. God is calling your thoughts to be light. God is calling with things around you to be light. Why? Because he's calling you to a race and we're saying yes to extra things and we're saying yes because we think that God is calling us to it. But here's the thing. If we give our heart to God in point number one, the desire, and we're not chasing our desires, we're chasing God's desires, and now God gives us his desires so that now our taste buds begin to change. We have the right desires, so now we can have the right vision to eliminate the right things. When you get the right desire, you learn how to eliminate the right things in your life. Let us not go through a season eliminating the wrong things because we have the wrong desires. Desires will always lead you to, the right desire will always lead you to eliminate the right things in life. I, I, I love it. Point number three, point number three, I, I want to get to this one. Because it says a devoted disciple has crazy expectations of what God can do. Desire, elimination, crazy expectations of what God can do. Anybody got crazy expectations? See, 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 this is why I've said it in Up This Way family because if we learn how to have the right desire, if we learn how to eliminate the right things, now that begins to, it moves out all of the, the, the fuzziness in your vision and now your expectations get, can, can now can go higher. See, now in this season, God is calling us to pray some big prayers that God is calling you to pray some prayers that you never prayed before. That, that God is calling you to open up your mouth and, and begin to trust me at a new level. And here's why. Because you have the right desires now. That you know that God is getting ready to move in your life. Pray some prayers that say, God, blow my mind this week, Lord God. Just blow my mind that you're doing things that I don't know how this was done. Give me that testimony, God, of, of just say, God, how did this happen in my life? I don't, it doesn't even make sense when I be, begin to tell my testimony to somebody. Nobody can understand what I just know is God. It, it doesn't make human sense. I just know that God moved in my life. God is shifting you into a space where you have now have to elevate your expectation of who God is in your life. How big are your prayers? A devoted disciple, prayer, it scares him or her. It's so big that you know, you know what, God, if this happens, it had to be you. It had to be you. The prayers that you pray, can you do? You need to elevate them. The, the prayers that you're praying this week, be honest with yourself, God, I can really do that prayer myself. Stop praying prayers that you know that you can't do. Stop praying prayers that you know, you know what, God, I, 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 this can't happen in my life if you don't move. Is, is your dream big enough? Can you do your dream on your own? Dream bigger. The vision that you're writing down in this season of your life, can you do it on your own? Can you pay people to do it? Can, can you connect with the right people? And it, it becomes dream bigger. Vision big, the vision needs to be bigger. Here's what God is speaking to me in this season. He said, Anthony, you're dreaming too small. You need to catch the right desires, eliminate the, right, the, the, the wrong noise, distractions, and get in a space with God and begin to dream so crazy that when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you get connected to people, they just look at you with a funny face. And you say, yeah, okay, I'm in the right place, God. I'm in the right place. I want to start talking to people. They say, Anthony, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So now, so now I just want to go by people and just start telling them stuff. And I'm waiting for them to say, ah, oh, you crazy. You okay? You on some drugs? And you're like, you know, I, I, I want that, Vanessa. Because that lets me know, this is what God is saying, because it's not my dream, it's his dream. And here's what accountability, here's what God is calling us to. A lot of us is not saying a dream because we don't want anybody else to know about it. Because so if it doesn't come to pass, we don't have to feel shame. We don't have to walk in guilt. But like I said at the top of the message, have obedience 
It's not true obedience. And God is calling you to a space where he wants you to start speaking of very things that he's told you that, that you're getting ready to walk into. No half obedience. We can stand to our feet. I want to share this story. I, I love this story that, uh, that I read in a book a while ago. And what I love about this story, it, it, it's a metaphor, family. It's a metaphor about making sure that we live a life fully devoted to Christ. So it's a breakfast family. You have the chicken, you have the cow, and then you have the pig. And what I love about this story is that, that the chicken gives a piece of himself. So we have eggs, scrambled eggs, cheese. But then also the cow just has to give a piece of himself so that we have milk. But the pig actually has to sacrifice his entirely. So we have some good old bacon. Come on, somebody. The chicken and a cow only gives a partial to participate in the meal, but the pig has to give him entire self in order to participate in the meal. Here's what I'm saying, that God through Jesus Christ, we understand that Jesus didn't do a half sacrifice. Come on somebody. But one sacrifice, he, he paid it all. He gave him entirely. And here's what he teaches through his leadership example, that being fully devoted is not living a life of just giving partial so that we can participate, but living a fully life that fully committed, being saying, you know what, God, take me as I am. I'm fully devoted. I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you my mind. I'm giving you my thoughts. Matter of fact, take my money. Take my, take my business, Lord God. Take, take the church, Lord God. I'm putting you first. First, Lord God, I just don't want you to live in 20% in my life. Your word says, could fully love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. God is calling you and saying, my sister, my brother, I want you to be fully devoted to me. Fully planted, submersed in his, in his, in his presence. Stop playing by the shore and jump fully in the water. Hear the word today, it's time for you to get fully wet. So stop just playing by the shore and then going back to convenience. So stop, stop just playing by the shore when you need them. Stop, stop just playing by the shore when your marriage is on the rocks. Your money's funny. Health is kind of off. Come on, family, we all been there. Me too. And God is saying, Anthony, in this time of your life, I want all of you, not just some of you. I want it all. When we begin to shift from a place of only serving God out of convenience, but shift into a place of serving God out of fully devoted, it unlocks the next level where God is getting ready to take you. There's some things I love in that scripture in Ephesians that eyes haven't, ears haven't heard. What well, would God, and I love in one translation family, it says what God has already prepared for you. It's already prepared. It's already, God is already prepared. And here's how we unlock it, with love. We unlock the next level where God wants to take us through love through obedience, through trust, through the right desires. Stand obedient to the thing that God has called us to. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you in this place, Lord God. Teach us how to be fully obedient. Wow, God, your, your church grew not because of man, but because of your touch. That there, was a, there were people in a place, Lord God, that they came together, even in a time that wasn't convenient to be a believer. Persecution, distrust, life on the line, and they still chose commitment. 
Father, in this time of our life, teach us how to be committed at that level. Teach our heart to be fully committed, even when, even when we don't feel it, Lord God, even when we don't want to go through it, Lord God, even when it's uncomfortable, Lord God, even when it's going to cause us to give up something or lose something. Teach us how to stay fully committed and trust you to the end because you're faithful. You're faithful to what you're doing. Touch the people in this place, to the people that's online, Heavenly Father. Begin to stir up our hearts toward you, Lord God, to love at a level that we never loved before, to begin to say no to some things, Lord God, to begin to say yes to you, Lord God, that we give you our yes, Lord God, and we thank you for what you're doing in this place, that you're taking them to greater, that you're taking them to better, that you're taking them higher, Lord God. Begin to show them what you're getting ready to do. When we fully obey, we flow in your presence. Your word says there's the fullness. We thank you for that fullness even right now. That all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. We never want to shift from this place of praying the prayer of salvation. That when we talked about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, this relationship, the greatest decision that you can ever make, fully sacrificed, fully committed, fully devoted to his father's business. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice that we're able to walk in this very image, that we're able to worship. It's, it's because that you were fully sacrificed, fully devoted. Maybe God is speaking to you today. Maybe that in this season, God is saying it's time to get fully wet. It's time to give, it, 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 this is the time to say, you know what, God, this moment is for you. This is my moment, God. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. Yes. Yes, God. Your soul is saying, yes, God. Put me in, coach. I've been birthed for this. I'm ready. I'm saying yes. No holding back. No turning back. Matter of fact, there's nothing back there. Everything is straight ahead. I'm saying yes to you, God. And God is saying, say yes. Say yes to my Lord. and Say, say yes to my son. Say, say yes to Jesus. And I'm telling you, you're getting ready to change your life when, you're, when the Holy Spirit is walking with you, guiding over you, comforting you, and leading you. God is saying, when you say yes to me, this is what's getting ready to happen. If that's you, just begin to stretch your hands. I want you to repeat this prayer. This community is going to join in. Just say, Jesus, thank you. I repent. I am a sinner. Thank you for dying for me. I confess. I believe that you died. Third day, went into the grave. But you rose with all power in your hand. You are my Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying for me. Come on, put your hands together, family. Oh, come on, we can do a little bit better than that. Put me in, coach. As we get ready to go back into worship to close our service, family, hear my heart today. This week, keep saying, put me in, coach. I'm ready. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. I've been made for this. I've been built for this. I'm devoted to this. Amen. Hey, there are several ways to give. Um, there should be a QR code. Boom, there it is. You can go to our website. You can go to our app. There are so many ways to give. Like I said, uh, we're using this money to build our kingdom. There's so many things, and there's classrooms that are out there uh, with, with our babies in it. And we want to further our ministry, right? And thank you. Thank you to the gift. Thank you uh, for, to, for the giver. Um, if you can, if not, it's okay. We still love you. Um, give when you can, right? Um, so thank you. Today is a special day in celebration. Why is that? Groups, go live today. We are going live. All right, so if you haven't, same thing, go on our app, go on the website, sign up for a group. I said it last week, your next best friend is in one of these groups, okay? Whether you like to eat, 
Um, there's places to eat. Um, if you're married, there's marriage groups. Yeah. If you're single, there's single groups. Um, men, there's a men's group. Just hang out, all right? So there's lots and lots of things that you can do. So please sign up for one of our groups um, and really look forward to this time and this season. Hey, if you don't have anything special to do on September 30th, or even if you do, I want you to check your calendar because there's going to be an amazing time of worship Friday, September 30th. We are partnering, yes, with New Life Church for a special night of worship at David's Tent, D.C. And we just heard worship is a lifestyle, right? Let's get to the heart of worship by joining in with this special night. Uh, you can look at the QR code. You can go online. Uh, those online, click the link for all the details. Uh, but we don't want to miss out on an opportunity to go before the Lord and worship, right? And then to join our powerful praise team with another powerful praise team, right? So September 30th, 7 o'clock, we'll all meet there. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, let us close out. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for renewing the desire within us, Father God. And as we go through this week, we increase our commitment to the things that you have called us to. We thank you that your hand stays upon us and that we can shelter under your mighty wings. Keep us through this week, Heavenly Father, until we come back again to come before your throne of grace. Lord, bless us and keep us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. See y'all next week.